Hi, I'm Ben Teleport, and in this video, I'll walk you through our Getting Started Guide. This Getting Started Guide is the foundation of setting up Teleport, and we'll often refer to this as our root cluster. Um, if you go in here in the docs, this will be updated to Teleport 9.1, but for the last year, we've had this Teleport 6 video, um, but a lot has changed um, since Teleport 6. Since then, um, there's a few things that will be different in this video. This video is going to be focused on setting up using AWS hosts instead of DigitalOcean. And also, since Teleport 6, we've added desktops and broadened our database support. This video is going to primarily focus on using Teleport for SSH services. And if you're sort of new and you just land on this page, Teleport is going to be this root cluster in which we set up an auth and proxy in a node. And this is going to act as a bastion to connect to a range of hosts in our AWS instance. We need port 443 open, and then also we need a domain name, and we're going to use that encrypt to get our um, certificates. OK, I think we're ready to dive in. So before we go into the prerequisites, let's just launch a new instance. I'm just going to be using the AWS Management Console. If you go to our Git repo, there are examples of Terraform scripts and CloudFormation that make your life a little bit easier. But by going through sort of the ClickOps way, hopefully I'll introduce a lot of the core concepts that will be important to Teleport as you want to script and automate it yourself. OK, so I'm going to just pick the smallest instance. We also have documentation around um, size requirements. Since I'm just using this for a small demo, I can just use a very small host. So pick one of my VPCs I already had, um, and I configure my subnet. Nothing else is needed, and I just have one uh, network interface, and I'm not using any user data in this scenario. Also, just picking the smallest disk possible, just eight gigs, and any tags. And then for the security group, keeping SSH open on port 22, but I'm going to change this to just my home IP address, which is definitely a good practice for when release privilege. And then we need a rule for 443. This is going to be for um, the Teleport UI. OK, now let's launch the instance. I'm going to choose an existing key pair that I have. OK, so now we'll wait for this to be pending. So what we need is a Linux machine. We, we just did port 443. We'll also need a two-factor app. Um, I'm going to be using Google Authenticator, uh, SSH client, which we can use for initial configuration, and then also access to a DNS service. I'm going to be using Route 53 since I'm using Amazon for this example. All right, so the first step is we are going to install Teleport on a lo uh, Linux host. Also, if you just want to do a local only setup, we also have a Docker Compose script, and so you can sort of try it without any cloud resources. Okay, so this instance running. It's still pending. My host is now running, and I'm going to connect to it. So I'm just using this config. And you see we're on the host. So let's just update on my packages. Um, if you see here, I'm just going to say yes. Okay, so now we're ready to dive in. Oh, it seems like we copied the code, so let's just come here. So I'm using yum to add the teleport repo. Install Teleport 9, say yes. Accept the GBG key. OK, so now we have Teleport 9 installed on the host. And another benefit of installing the package is we have the systemd package. So you can see we know we have it loaded, but it's disabled. But we'll use this in a bit. Next up, we're going to configure DNS. What we need for our DNS is this is going to be teleport.example.com. But we also have um, 
we're going to add a record for star.telebot.example.com. And this is in case we use application access in the future. And then I actually, my domain name is um, teleport-demo. So let's configure this. And in my case, I'm going to get the public IP address of the host. You know, in this scenario, it's probably not great. You might want to use like an application load balancer to add more hosts. But, you know, it's just a simple getting started guide. So let me go to Route 53. Also, if you don't want to do this in the UI, we have instructions here on using the AWS Route 53 setup. So one hosted zone. This has already been created. So let's create a new record. So just do teleport hyphen nine. I'm going to create a C name. And then I'm also going to create star dot. And there's going to be a C name for the same host. If you want to learn more about this star dot, um, you can watch my teleport application access getting started video. I'm going to use it in the future, so I'm going to leave it here, but it's not a hard requirement to get started. So it's going to create the records. And OK, so we've done this. We're going to um, wait for it to get configured, but let's um, skip to configuring Teleport. So we're going to do a um, public internet deployment with Let's Encrypt. So what we need to do is we're going to use our teleport configure command line to output the configuration options. So let's copy this command, and we're going to make a few changes. And then we're on the EC2 host itself. Permission denied. Um, so actually, we need to change this anyway. We don't want it to automatically run. So let's just put it into a notepad. What we want to do here is change the email address to my email. And then this cluster name, this is important. It has to exactly match where you're going to put your main cluster. And as you remember here, we're going to put it on teleport-9. Hyphen demo. Okay, so let's go back to our host. Okay, so we have a permission denied here. Let's just try going to the root user and running it again. Okay. So it was permission denied, but you can't find it. This is due to the file linking with AWS. So if I just do which teleport, it's not installed for the root user, it's an EC2 user. So let's just run this command again. Okay, still not liking teleport writing out. So let's write it just to here. Okay, so now we have this teleport.yaml file. This is going to be our standard config. So let's see if we can copy it to easy etc. I'm going to copy this file over and then okay so we have it here so this is our um, file configuration you can see we have the node name standard output we have the auth server no enabled the SSH service enabled and the proxy service configured with Acme then we have the other information here so next up, we need to start Teleport. And we're going to be using the systemd unit that we showed. OK, so you can see it started. Looks like it's running. Now,
Okay, so it's signing with Teleport. So it looks like this is working, but we don't have a login now. So we need to create the login to log into Teleport. And so this is step two of four. We're going to use tcuddle, which we're going to run on the host itself. Add a user, it's going to be called Teleport Admin. Roles, these are inbuilt in Teleport, editor and access. And then logins, these are going to let us log into SSH machines as these users. These can also be referred to as principles, um, but um, you can think of them as root user. So we can use Ubuntu and ECT user. So let's go back to my host. So you know, we have this permission denied again. And actually, if I do this, it's not going to like it. Can't find tcuddle, so we need to do the same. The same sudo, and then use a local bin, teleport. This has been successful. And then we can click this link. to get started and create the user. So let's create the user. And just out of the box, it's configured with um, Authenticator, but you can also add hardware tokens as well. Let me find my Authenticator app. Too quick on the passwords. OK, so now um, we're in Teleport. So what you can see here, we have this one host here. This host is actually the host of Teleport itself. So it's the proxy, the auth server, and the node itself. And actually, if we log in as EC2 user, you can see this is the YAML file. But what's cool and different as opposed to we've been using the terminal for OpenSSH is all of this information is audited, so along with myself adding an MFA device. Also, the session has started and ended. And we have session events. And uh, what's cool about this is it's almost like a you know, like a DVR. You can like play back the session. So we've gone through scanning. Um, I've used the web UI to log in, but you can also use Teleport Client locally. We have instructions here on how to install it. So let's try installing it locally. So I'm going to open a new terminal window and pick my line.teleportdemo.com. It's going to ask for my username and password again. And here we have, um, you see I actually have a few clusters here, but this is the one I've logged into. And you can see that I have a certificate that's valid for 12 hours. And what I can do is the same thing. Is uh, AC2 user at, um, and so you can pick this node name, but also what's cool with Teleport is you can also use labels to, to access hosts. And you know this is just the example, but you could use this. Let's say if there was a specific worker, so you can think of your um, fleet, you know, more as sort of cattle instead of pets. And so as things sort of scale up and down, just use labels as an easy way to sort of alias and understand machines. Okay, so let's go back to our docs. Um, step four: Have fun with Teleport. So this is more or less, you know, we've completed the setup now. Um, let's go through a few common ones. So we've done. We'll just copy status. OK, so let's just. Status, you can see which principles I have, um, whether it has like Kubernetes enabled or disabled. Um, we can add a node to a cluster. So let's do this next. Um, Let's come back to our instance. So we're going to launch a new instance. Let's pick another flavor. 
Let's make an Ubuntu host. Another small one. And we're going to pick SSH for now, but also just for my um, IP. Okay, wait for this to boot. Let's give it a name. And wait for this to stop pending. Okay, looks like it's running. Let's try and connect. Okay, let me just check that okay, it's connection. So, just run an update. And so, the first thing we need to do is also install Teleport on this host. Um, we can actually add a server here. We actually have this pretty handy um, script. And this script should install, connect, and set up Teleport for us. So give this a moment. What it does is it downloads Teleport, unpacks it, set up system D. Um, you know, we also have information about how you obtain and deal with these tokens here. Let us close this. And here you can see we have this one host here. Um, it's a tunnel. This means it's connecting over the proxy instead of directly dialing to the auth server. And if I use Ubuntu, you can see we're in this host and it's been connected. Okay, so let's go back to our guide. Um, we also have information here on um, cloud config, but this would be sort of the time in which you think about how do you want to deal with tokens and rolling servers into your Teleport cluster. We also have adding applications. I'd recommend checking out my Teleport application access guide if you want to go here. And then last up, you know, we have more guides on setting up Teleport. This is a good place to get started. Um, but like I said, in each one of these server access, Kubernetes, databases, or desktops, each have their own getting started guide, but you'll likely start touch on lots of the basics that you've learned in this one video. If you have any comments or questions, um, please leave them below or join our community Slack. Thanks for watching.